Hello everyone, this is Dave from JD Cycle Works. This is a little hot rod we're messing with down around here. It's a 74 AMC Javelin. You can see it's primer army green. It has a cowl induction hood on it. it. Adds a spoiler on the back. Some cool wheels, some sticky Mickey Thompson street radials on there. If you look underneath, you can see it's uh, set up with a Ford 9 inch stainless steel exhaust system, a set of cow tracks. Take a walk around here and pretty stock interior going on it. It's not perfect, but it's a heck of a fun driver. The fun part about this car is under there. I'll show you. That is an LSA supercharger on a 408 cubic inch LS engine. It's got some forged pistons and nice crank in there. It's got some good rods in it. Aluminum rectangle port heads on it. It goes pretty good. It's just a mellow hot rod to be cruised around and have some fun with. I think we're gonna take you out for a ride. You ready to go for a ride? Like I said, this is a, this is a kind of a budget based hot rod. Something fun to rip around on, have fun on, hopefully not break the bank. It's got the nine inch Holly dashboard to tell me what's going on. Turbo 350 transmission, which may not last very long, but we'll find out. But I'm trying to put this car together just to go enjoy, have fun. And uh, eventually it might get a paint job. It might not, but it's very, very rust free. And for all you purists out there who hate my guts right about now, this car came with this engine in here and already had the AMC engine long gone. We're just taking it easy on this as we warm it up. So essentially it's our way of saving this car because it already was uh, stuck in the barn for 30 years with no engine or transmission in it. And I bought it from a person who started off by getting the LS engine in there. Well that engine, that engine expired. So during that transition I built the Ford 9 inch rear with some good axles, 355 posi. Got the, uh, the radials on there, the drag radials help hold the power down. got a manual valve body and a transmission. Eventually it'll get a four-speed automatic that's built to take the power a little better. Fun cruiser car. Let's see if I can find a place to open it up and let you guys see what it does. Say it's got a three inch stainless steel exhaust system that we got from pipes and modified to fit the car with a set of two and a half inch stainless steel tailpipes and flow through mufflers. When I first got the car, the whole interior was not in here. The dashboard was smashed up, destroyed, and held together with wire ties and tap screws. So I spent a lot of time putting also this all back together and replacing the wiring harness and getting the car working. So I want it to be like a stock car on the inside. The wipers work. The horn will work eventually. But you don't really see these cars anymore. And they're a nice fun platform to work from. It's a light car. It's not going to hold me back with a lot of heavy weight. About 3,200 pounds. That ain't bad. It has a, a big electric fuel pump to support the engine. The fuel injection system. We modified the fuel tank to accept all that. A 
and we'll see where it goes. It doesn't have a radio. The exhaust pipes is a radio. It does have visors though. It, it's a good possibility. <laughs> it, oh. Well, I may not hear anything. You might hear something, we may not. I don't know. That's okay. Temperature is good. Fuel pressure is good. Everything else is good. Traffic's good. So let's see what happens here. Whatever, we look forward here. We are just a dead stop. Well, those tires didn't stick very well. Let me try a second gear. A second gear pump. A dead stop, I can't do that. Until I get the suspension down in front of me. This might do better from a second gear roll on launch. We'll try that in a little bit. area of Pennsylvania here. for an old-fashioned car. Nothing compared to today's vehicles. Still got a relatively stock suspension in it. Let's see if the bridge is clear. I don't know what that number was, but we probably don't want to show the public. <laughs> We're going speed limit, y'all. That's right. I'm used to, I'd really need a little bit more gear in here.
obviously it would be for sale for the right price. But where are you going to find a rust-free 74 Javelin that's got enough power to take out your average car that's around the corner? That's, that's painted primer army green. much fun it should be illegal <laughs> it actually it probably is some about that sound up below it really it really encourages you to do things that you shouldn't do yeah, come on out I'll show you the engine Here she is, purring like a kitten. The power brakes in it, power steering, all the luxury things you need. Trigger on its side. Like I said, this is a very budget-minded hot rod that's just being put together to go have some fun on without breaking the bank, even though it is very expensive. But it's, uh, it's a whole lot of fun. Oh yeah, this, this will probably take out most of your average stock vehicles, your performance vehicles. Again, we can still make more power. We can turn up the blower on it. Everything is set very conservatively right now with the blower and a boost, which is something I want. Got plenty of power to get me in trouble, have lots of fun, and hopefully stay together. Look at these lines on this thing. Check that out. Got freaking hips. Check out them hips. You ain't getting that nowadays. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it should get decent fuel mileage with the fuel injection system on there. We do have a cruising down the road in the low 14s, which is very nice for efficient cruising. Obviously heavy load, it's a lot more fuel given it to give what, the, what it needs for the boosted engine to not have it fail. But it should give very decent fuel mileage, especially with an overdrive transmission, it'll get a lot better. Which that'd be a really nice upgrade in the future, a nice foil 80E or something. I think that'd be great, but really, huh? What's that going on? Too much. <laughs> That's the problem. But, but right now, if you look inside this car, it's pretty much bone stock. Yeah, except for the dash. Well, you don't look that part. <laughs> but this has a Pierre Cardin seats that a lot of people are excited about in the AMC community. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's something different. Hope you all enjoyed the video on it. If you look underneath here, you can kind of see the fuel tank. That's our fuel filters, fuel pump stuck up in there. And these tires, well, hell, I don't think they're gonna last very long. There's our fuel cap there. She's not perfect, but she's a good old girl. It's good to save one from a barn and get her going again.
Thank okay, you. let's lift up the car and I'm going to show you what's underneath. the car you can see it's pretty very rust free under here you can I don't know if you can see this but there is no rust at all on the rocker panels or the floors or oh there's our fuel lines check them now got some big fuel lines coming up big fuel filter here's my 11 inch Ford brakes the drum brakes I went with and up here you can kind of see that monster fuel pump and our modified fuel tank with the fuel lines. This uh, Ford 9 inch rear here I had fabricated to fit the same specs as a 70 Mustang. Worked out really well with the tire and wheel fitment in the wheel well. I still have room for a little more tire if need be. And uh, just to bolt in, I got the cow tracks on here. Gotta do a little more adjusting on those. We got nice emergency brakes. Our stainless steel exhaust by pipes. That I modified to fit this car because they do not make it for this car. And you can see it looks pretty clean under there. Not bad for an old whore. And here's a turbo 350 transmission. Hopefully it lasts. Aluminum oil pan. We have some nice big Willwood disc brakes in the front to help stop this thing. Other than that, it's pretty stock under here as far as the chassis goes. It's just a just stock car, very rust free. Come look down my exhaust there. Nice H pipe coming down, big aluminum drive shaft. Come on the way back. You can kind of see here in our quarters, no rust at all. It's just a couple more things I wanted to show you with this car that are interesting. We got to open up the wheel well here and re-radius a little bit. Make room for these tires, it's a little close here on both sides. That's one thing I gotta do. Might got the Caltrack suspension on here. Over here you can see we had a got a little adjusting to do here, but once I open that up, I'll fix all that. But it's pretty it's, look at it, solid. Look at that. There's no rust. It's all original sheet metal. Not bad for something from 1970. Just don't look at that hole there. That was actually formed because there was a screw in the door sticking through it. I was rubbing on that. So that rubbed the hole in there. Pretty interesting. Nice solid frame rails. That's our Javelin. That's our 74 Javelin. Fun little car to mess around with. And that's our, our Rust-Oleum spray bomb. Rust-Oleum Army Green spray bomb paint job. About 150 bucks. It turned to one color. One day it might get painted. Or maybe you won't. Hey, if you don't spend the money on the you can spend the money upgrading the rest of the car. That's right. Or a new transmission with an overdrive. Yeah, but how much is that actually? Genuinely, how much is that going to cost? Less than a paint job. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is extremely expensive these days. Beyond, com and anybody who does this stuff, or just they, they're quite aware of it. Same with the motorcycles. The tires are 295-55R15, drag radial from Mickey Thompson, and uh, we'll see how long they last. Yeah, they lay some good rubber down. Yeah, I got I to gotta drop the tire pressure a little bit and do a little adjusting on the suspension for the preload, and that'll help it go straighter. 
one of the things you got to dial in. But the second gear roll on it had plenty of traction. It did. So that there worked just fine. Just in the dead stop, it's not working very well. I, that can be adjusted with the preload on this link here. Mm -hmm. That'll put more weight on a different tire to help it go straighter. That's what that is. I just have to go out there and experiment with it and adjust that link. And that'll straighten that right out. I can see there's less weight on here from the rubber mark, so it means I gotta just change that to put more weight in that tire, which I can do. And these are stock old, worn out old leaf springs, which are just fine. I actually kind of like how they sit. And there's new, I got new bushings in them, but I like how it sits with the car, so I'm not changing them. This, I just fuel line coming out of here. This fuel system has a constant return system where it has, it's fed up front to the regulator and another line feeds the fuel constantly right back to the fuel tank. So it keeps it flowing all the time. That's a fuel filter there, it's another fuel filter back there. Why, uh, why two? Because you have your, your feed and your return. That keeps a, a consistent pressure up at the, both at the um, regulator, the fuel pressure regulator and helps keep the fuel run a little cooler, just moving it back and forth instead of having a deadhead. At least I may be corrected in the comments, but that's kind of what I was told and it's working so I'm going with it. This fuel system should, ho should be able to handle a thousand, a little over a thousand horsepower and also be made to be reliable for street driving. Let stock cross member here just modified to fit the transmission. Custom, this is all custom made. These are shorty headers that we kind of custom made to fit the exhaust. Like, the, like I said, this exhaust system was for, I believe for a Mustang. And I got from pipes and I modified to fit. The tail pipes we cut up a lot to reconfigure them to fit the car. We, we tried this system, which I got from pipes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fair. <laughs> But it works. It makes plenty of power with it, even though it's not the best header system in the world, but it works fine. It works fine. I'm not out racing. I'm not trying to go win records with it. I don't want to get involved in all that. Oh yeah, look at my, my backyard solid engine mounts you can see there. Nice. Right. Stock suspension up here, stock coil springs. Probably 50 years old, which is fine. Look at this, no rust. No rust. This car is rust free. It's amazing how rust free this car is. Yes, if you put your car outside and store it outside in the grass, it will melt on you. This car was kept in a, a dry environment its whole life, even though it was in pieces, and it's still in a dry environment. So hopefully it will last for many, many more years. It does have power steering, a little leak here. I did make, convert it to power brakes, which was great because with the drum brakes it came with, the brakes were merely a suggestion. Oh yeah, very big Willard brake system on the back, 11 inch brake drums on the back instead of a 10. So it stops very, very good for, for this car. Much safer. This, that's a replica of the factory spoiler, which isn't a very good replica, but it gives it the kind of look. The factory one is a, shaped a little different than that, but it gives it a cool look. Yeah. Oh, that's some overspray, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, may, it may get better in the future, we'll see. When I first got the car, it was 100 different colors. This made it all one. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we have here. We have more paint to go. You need a touch of paint? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> In stock. 
Got a couple of dings and dents. It's all right, though. Not bad. I'm not sure if I like these tires, but they're okay. Toyos. And these are some nice Willwood Racing, or um, some Weld Racing wheels I found, some vintage wheels I found on the marketplace, mm. which fit the car, fit my style, old. But it was baby blue originally. Yeah. Oh, the rim size? Yeah. Yeah, that's an 8-inch rim up front. The back has a 10-inch rim. You see my fuel pressure regulator there that feeds the injectors. There's my, there's my feed and return. There's a couple of my rusty coil mounts, but it's not missing. It's working good. So they're staying. Yeah, they're coils. Yeah, they're, they're coil packs, but again, it's the stuff ideal, but it's working fine. So I'm leaving it. It's not showing any misfires. I'm not going to break what ain't broken. This here circulates coolant through the inside the blower to help cool down the charge of air. And that's a reinforced brick inside there. You can see the hoses go through here and it's the back of there. This helps cool the charge, the air down. And that gets circulated with this pump. Factory power brake booster, dual brakes. Yeah. And if you do change your javelin from manual brakes to power brakes, you do have to change the brake pedal. There's a different hole in the ratio. It's different position where it connects to it. Got the factory cowl hood. This, oh, that's my uh, breather system. I got a little check valve there for my PCV. There's no oil coming out of here. It allows air pressure out, but not in. So I do have the PCV valve connected to this engine. And right now it's showing, I have a vacuum gauge, vacuum pressure gauge in the car, and it's showing zero pressure under heavy load, which is great. There's no blow by, everything's sealed up. It's working good. That's what that is. That might, that might get updated one day, but I think, the, I think that's kind of professional looking. Things will get updated as time goes on. It's a, it's a budget toy. Something we're playing around with. It's far from perfect. It will never be perfect. But it's a fun, fun car to play around with. And if someone walks up to it and scratches it, it's not a big deal. A little spray bomb, and away I go. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Here she is, purring like a kitten. <laughs>